Hi gang, this is Scareduino, a shoulder-mounted robotic skull controlled by an Arduino that I made for Halloween. In this video I'll show you how I made it. The first thing I do is put all the electronics on a breadboard for testing. It consists of a servo for opening and closing the jaw, a speaker for making the sound, two LEDs for the eyes. All that is controlled by an Arduino Uno. There's a 9 volt battery to power the Arduino, which then powers the speaker and LEDs. There's also around 5 volts of AA batteries for the servo and a switch for that. And there's also a switch to tell the Arduino when to do the whole sequence. Let's go through it all. Here's a circuit diagram showing the servo, speaker, LEDs, switches, Arduino, batteries, and some resistors. Note first that I use this row for the ground reference, or common. It's this row on the breadboard. The negative for these batteries is connected to that, as is one of the Arduino's ground pins, and anything else that needs a ground reference. There's no actual connection to earth ground, it's just a common level for all voltages to be relative to. A zero volts, if you will. The first part is a switch that tells the Arduino to do the whole sequence of turning on the LEDs while opening and closing the jaw using the servo and making some sounds. For that, one wire goes from the Arduino's 5 volt pin to one leg of the switch. Another leg of the switch then goes to pin 7, and also to a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which then goes to the ground row. Notice that in the final version I changed to this push button switch instead, for ease of use. It's this one in the diagram. The servo motor is for opening and closing the skull's jaw. That simply consists of the servo motor, around 5 volts of AA batteries to power it, a switch so I can disconnect the power to save the batteries, and all the wiring. The battery negative goes to the ground row, and from there to the servo's brown wire. The battery positive goes to this row, and from there through the switch to the servo's red wire. The servo's yellow wire goes to pin 5 in the Arduino, so that the Arduino can control the servo. And here it all is in the circuit diagram. The speaker's one that I got from a musical gift card. I remove it from the card, and extend the wires. The speaker's negative wire goes to the ground row, and the speaker's positive wire goes to the Arduino's pin 12. However, it didn't start out that way. The Arduino's digital I.O. pins can handle at most 40 milliamps of current, so I first have the speaker's positive go to a 1 kilo ohm resistor through an ammeter and then to pin 12. I then measure the current. It was only 2.4 milliamps and very quiet, so I try 100 ohms, and it's only 17.2 milliamps. Finally I try with no resistor at all, and it's 38.9 milliamps. And though it was close to the 40 milliamp limit, I go with no resistor. Here's the speaker in the circuit diagram. And lastly, I use two 20,000 millicandela LEDs for the eyes. The LEDs negatives, or short legs, go to the ground row. Their positives each go to a 100 ohm resistor to limit the current to 15.4 milliamps, below what I suspected is the LED's 20 milliamp rating. From there, they each go to a different Arduino pin. Pin 9 for one of them, and pin 10 for the other. And here's the code. There's too much to go through every line, but it's available on my website here. There's also a link to it in the video description. At the top is an include and various macros and variable declarations. Then there's a setup function. Note that at the bottom of that, I tell the servo to set the initial jaw position to closed. Then there's a pretty common debounce function needed for making one of the switches work. And lastly, there's a loop function, which gets called over and over as long as the Arduino is turned on. This one's a typical microcontroller type loop function, in that it never sleeps. Well, except for a little cheat when the debounce function is called. Instead, it does some initial checking for the switch setting to see if it should start or stop the whole sequence of events. And then there's a big state machine that does different things depending on if the jaw is supposed to be opening, held open, closing, or is closed. Sound is done using the tone function, with the frequency increasing as the jaw is opened and decreasing as the jaw is closed, until finally the no tone function turns it off. And now for getting it all into the skull. The skull is a hollow plastic one I got from a local dollar store. As you can see, it's easy to cut with an X-Acto knife. That leaves me with three pieces, the jaw, the top, and the back for accessing the inside. For the eyes, I get these bottle caps, poke holes in them, insert the LEDs, hot glue the LEDs in place, solder some wires to them, and add heat shrink to prevent short circuits. Then I cut some red plastic packaging and hot glue those to the caps. 
Some opaque tape around the caps prevents lighting up the rest of the skull inside. Using paint thinner, I remove some of the black coating from the eye areas to let more light through and hot glue the caps in place. And here's the result. For the jaw, I find a very simple solution, tape. Due to the way I'd cut the jaw away from the rest of the skull, this point here is where it hinges. And notice that it's fairly straight. I test all these tapes for stickiness to the plastic, and aluminum tape is the best. I follow that with a layer of duct tape for added strength. Before going too much further, I then cut up some dark garbage bag plastic and tape it inside. Opening the mouth now shows a slightly shiny, but dark inside. Next I make a box out of bits of plastic, one that I could secure the servo in. To bolt the servo into the box, I use these small nuts and bolts I bought from Radio Shack years ago. I then make a long stick from plastic from a hobby store and attach one end to the servo. The other end I bolt to the back of the jaw. I then hot glue the plastic box containing the servo in place. A quick test shows it works. Next comes mounting it on my shoulder. I start by cutting this piece of aluminum flashing, which you can get in rolls in hardware stores. I shape two pieces of stiff scrap copper wire and attach them to the flashing using more scrap wire. I then make some holes in the top of the skull and run some cable ties through them. I put the copper through and it looks promising. I next need to mount that to one of the backpack straps, so I make this piece of cloth thingy. I start by cutting out a piece of black material from an old t-shirt and get out the sewing machine. Notice that I also sew on some velcro. With a hole cut in the middle of it, I put the aluminum flashing behind it and mount it to the backpack strap. And here it is with the skull in place. The last big step is to move the circuit from the bedboard to this more robust container that can go in the backpack. I have this telephone cable with four wires in it to run from the inside of the backpack up to the skull and for the switches. So I modify the circuit diagram to take into account those cables. There's four of them. This section here would be mounted on a piece of plastic. And here's that piece of plastic with holes drilled and some parts in place. This bare wires for all ground or common connections. It's this in the circuit diagram. I mount some small bolts to a piece of plastic for the Arduino. This Arduino has rubber feet, so it can just sit on the plastic. I put on the nuts and it's ready. Here's the case with all the necessary holes in it. And here it is with most things strapped in with cable ties. Now the telephone cables are in their holes. And finally everything is either soldered in place or plugged in. I fashion the end of one of the cables into a makeshift plug for plugging into the servo. For the switches, I decide on a momentary switch instead for activating the whole sequence of events. I put the switches in this handy pill bottle so I can hold it in my hand. I hot glue the speaker to inside the skull. Then I run the cables for the skull through the black material. I solder and heat shrink the speaker and LED wires and plug in the servo. To test it, I turn on the Arduino by plugging in the 9 volt battery adapter. I switch on the power for the servo. And when the momentary switch is pressed, it works. All that's left are the finishing touches, like wrapping white plastic around the neck and putting on the back of the skull. I put the electronics in the knapsack and wrap some black tape around the cables to make them less visible. Done. Time to put it on. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more neat videos like this. That includes another Arduino one, this time making a talk. Another showing my 555 timer chip music player that I crank by hand. And for variety, one on how to make a 30 kilovolt high voltage DC power supply. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or a comment below. See you soon.